she has this magnetism about her. The camera loves her. By almost any measure, Terry Hatcher is one of Hollywood's biggest stars. Anytime you're out with Terry, she causes a stir with fans and paparazzi. <laughs> That's part of her life. At an age when most actresses see their careers start to fade, Terry's career continues to soar. Suddenly there's Terry Hatcher at the center again of pop door culture and at the center of the Hollywood world. Her role as Susan Meyer in the hit TV series Desperate Housewives has earned her not only a legion of new fans, but a Golden Globe and three Screen Actors Guild Awards. Once you have those, you're pretty much good, at least for a while, in Hollywood. But despite all her success on screen, off screen, her love life has been punctuated by heartbreak. Maybe you can't have it all at the same time. Maybe there just well, hasn't been room for a guy yet. From Superman pinup to struggling single mom to desperate housewife, the rise and fall and rise again of Terry Hatcher. In April of 2006, 42 year old Terry Hatcher stared out from the cover of Vanity Fair magazine on the nation's newsstands. She's an amazing, beautiful woman. She really became emblematic of a woman who was not a kid anymore, but who was still extremely vibrant. There are people out there who are sex symbols who it's all about the sex. It's all about the the boom. And with Terry, there's plenty of the boom, but it's, it's, there's such an elegance there. That is what makes her rare. The past 12 months had been a whirlwind, capped off that fall with a Golden Globe Award for Best Performance by an Actress in a Comedy Series for her work on Desperate Housewives. Terry Lynn Hatcher was born in Palo Alto, California on December 8, 1964. Her father, Owen, was a nuclear physicist and electrical engineer, and her mother, Esther, was a computer programmer at Lockheed Martin. She didn't come from a showbiz family. There was nothing in her roots to indicate that showbiz was going to be her life. In her memoir, Terry wrote that as an only child, she got plenty of attention from her parents although oftentimes the message was mixed. Her mother is telling her she's perfect, she can do no wrong in her eyes, and everything is great. And her dad is telling her nothing she does is good enough. Determined to study math and become a teacher, Terry enrolled at De Anza College in Cupertino, California. But her experience with the Featherettes in high school had also sparked an interest in performing. She enrolled in an acting seminar at the American Conservatory Theater in nearby San Francisco. Her teacher, a young redhead, would one day become as famous as Terry. There were 160 of us or something, and group one was taught by a 26-year-old young ACT actress named Annette Benning. Terry applied the same tenacity and determination to studying acting as she had to solving math problems. With her dancer's figure, Terry made quite an impression on some of her fellow students. Terry was doing a scene and uh, and this 15-year-old boy was literally like staring at her legs. She was wearing shorts or something, I don't know, but you know, literally like not paying attention to Annette, not paying attention to the work being done, but paying attention to Terry's legs or whatever it was. And, um, and Annette hit him. At the end of 2002, Terry Hatcher left New York and actor John Tenney, her husband of eight years, and moved back to Los Angeles to find work. All you can really do at the end of the day is be who you are and, and try to show up every day being who you are. The next day, Terry was called in to audition for a role on another ABC series. The character was a single mother named Susan Meyer, and the show was called Desperate Housewives. It had already been turned down by three other networks. Desperate Housewives was a show that had to scratch and claw its way onto the schedule. Um, a lot of people had to be convinced that this was going to be worth doing. This is one of those stories where the producer goes out and pitches to everybody and nobody wants it. Terry was well aware of the long odds of the show getting on the air, but she also knew what a great role Susan Meyer would be for her. For, for Terry Hatcher, Desperate Housewives was a, was a second chance, was, was the chance that almost no actress even expects to get at this point. Terry had really hit, oh, hit a wall. It was sort of like you got to prove yourself all over again. It was almost like starting at square one. And then this thing comes along, and it means a lot to her, obviously, because she reads for it, she pushes for it, she's persistent. I go back to the first reaction I had when I first read it, which was just it was the best thing I'd read in five years. And 
and it made me laugh and it made me cry and it and it just felt so relatable to my life. And for this audition, she took no chances on being perceived as arrogant. So she goes into the audition in jeans, a t-shirt, no makeup, not glamorous at all, because she's determined to show them who she really is. She doesn't want this false perception of her. The rest, of course, is history. Terry got the part, and Desperate Housewives became not only a huge hit, but a cultural phenomenon. I sort of have ended up just calling it a really fresh, entertaining television show. It's a story about relationships between the women in this neighborhood, between their spouses, and everything that is good, and also everything that goes awry. This could have just as easily been a pilot that never made it to series, could have been canceled after six episodes. It all fell into place, and suddenly there's Terry Hatcher at the center again of popular culture and at the center of, of the Hollywood world. It was sort of this new thing on television, this ensemble cast of women, and it just reached this cult status. It had a ton of followers. Everyone was talking about it at work the next day. It was the buzzworthy TV show for several years. Terry sort of stands out on primetime TV because her and the other women of Desperate Housewives sort of ushered in this women over 40, sexy women, sex appeal. There was no doubt that the role of Susan had launched Terry back to the very top of the TV game. But life at the top came with its own set of challenges. A any TV actress that's on an hour show, that's an incredible amount of work. I don't think people realize how much you actually film an when you produce an hour of television a week for 24 weeks in a year. That's just, they're basically you're locked down for nine months. And her schedule between the show, being a mom, doing the publicity, and in fact, at the time that the show hit, she was acting as her own publicist too. So she was managing it all. As Susan Meyer, Terry brought a very real kind of vulnerability and a sexy but goofy attitude to the role that made her a favorite with both fans and critics. Her character was very much alive and bubbly and effervescent and had a lot more physical humor than probably all of the others. And that was a key component of the show. She really doesn't take herself that seriously, and, and I think that's a real asset if you want to do comedy. You really certainly can't be afraid to make a fool out of yourself. And Terry, as elegant as she is, there's also a silliness about her. I think what made Terry right for Desperate Housewives was the fact that she had this kind of, this sort of scattered vulnerability. It fit in perfectly with sort of all the chaos and craziness unfolding around her on the show. She wasn't this self-assured you know, full of herself person, but someone who is always angst riddled. And I feel like that's probably, in some ways, the real Terry Hatcher, too. At the end of the first season, Terry found herself on the list of Golden Globe nominees. The stylist who had been working with her before Desperate Housewives premiered could tell the difference right away. In Hollywood, there's definitely a pecking order in terms of clothes and who gets to wear what. One famous fashion house said, you know, well, if you want to buy something in the boutique, we'll give you a discount very kind of like haughty. But that changed almost overnight. Houses were, you know, they were falling all over themselves. They were sending sketches, they were sending people, they were calling, they were making all sorts of overtures. And the same thing happened with the fashion magazines. She was, as she put it in her Golden Globe speech, Hollywood's biggest has been. The situation completely changed. As soon as the show started airing, I mean, not even a month into the show starting, she was already booked for covers on Harper's Bazaar, in style. Through all the ups and downs, from the heady rush of a hit show to the undeniable pain of a marriage on the rocks and a career in jeopardy, Terry Hatcher has resolved to never again accept burnt toast as inevitable. I see a lot of blue skies. I see a lot of opportunity and happiness. Um, but you know, it's never all one thing or the other. Hey, nice to meet you. There's very few people who have what she has. There's very few people that I've met who can kind of juggle the things she juggles and, and do the different kinds of things she does. And she's done it as a single mom. You know, she's that incredible combination of incredibly strong and also fragile. And she, she doesn't really realize sometimes that she's, she's as special a lady as she is. Terry Hatcher has acknowledged that there have been times that she's been very depressed, that there have been times she's felt very badly about her situation, and she's going to share her, her experiences with others with the idea that it may help them in some way.
Tara says she's come to a really good place in her life. She understands how lucky she is, and that success is now something that she can create. Tara, 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 Tara.